Oh man, do I have quite the upset for you. So have you ever had a time where your amiibo just stopped working or didn't work entirely? Have you ever had a situation or been in a situation where your amiibo physically snaps right off the base? Has your drink gone missing between transition and video? And, uh, entirely besides the point. Broken amiibo, whether it be physically or in-game, is no laughing matter by any means. It's always an unfortunate feeling when you break something you spent your hard-earned money on. This whole issue is primarily brought to my attention when I decided to try unboxing an amiibo I own for actual use besides keeping it inside the plastic prison. This didn't turn out well as I stepped on it while I was lying on the floor and it happened to break somehow. An added bonus to my entree of disappointment was a dish of NFC chip broke with sprinkles of salt on it. <sighs> Alas, so as a future footnote and to all you viewers out there also looking for a good elucidation, I present a clear and perfect video guide and explanation to fixing and repairing your amiibo properly. Not only this, but also as to why and how they became ruptured in the first place. So how about it. Go get your toy toolboxes and let's resolve these amiibo ordeals together. To start with a legendary solution that I can most certainly deconfirm, yelling at your amiibo, WHY WON'T YOU WORK, is not a valid solution. You'll just create more problems than fixes and your amiibo will never cooperate with verbal abuse. Probably because it's an inanimate object, go figure. Now just because it's a lifeless statue doesn't mean it's unbreakable. Unresponsive NFC chips and physical damage are both the only known culprits to properly defining a busted amiibo. And I'll start the video fixing the latter of the two. Snapping your amiibo arm, leg, or head off by accident is no fun. Not only does it drop the monetary value of these things, why sealed amiibo collecting is superior, but it generally doesn't look that cool on your shelf. It's like an action figure, but without the action, if you know what I mean. But don't you fret, band-aid, and tape seekers, for there's a way to definitely fix this. Quite simply, all you need is some super glue and a couple napkins and q-tips. Just dip the q-tip in the glue or squirt some glue on the amiibo, either way is fairly fine. Depending on the size of your amiibo and the amiibo wound itself, you must use precision pasting and wiping in order to make your amiibo look prestigious and clean, along with erasing any goopy glue marks, nothing to think long and hard about. Now wait just a few hours or so for it to dry, and viola, voila, your amiibo looks as good as new. Easy tutorial, and possibly why not many people really upload this kind of fix due to its easiness. Now despite it being the perfect true physical fix of your amiibo, there exists some other hypotheticals to be talked about. For example, what if you don't like the look of the glued amiibo? Well here's a mind blower, go buy another copy of the Amiibo. Spend the 50 extra dollars for all I care. BAM! Easy fix. Now how about something simpler, like what if your amiibo is sun dried up and looks like a decaying Dorito or if the paint is flaking? Well that's where you can get really creative here, as all you need to do is carefully paint or draw sharpie over the imperfection, and it looks great afterwards. Yeah, any girl would die for that. It can open your mind too to a lot of creativity, no need to be a Da Vinci for this problem. BAM! Easy fix. A rather tricky and frequently asked ordeal to a broken amiibo is what if my Yarn Yoshi amiibo for example has a string that's poking out, or if there's any imperfection with the yarn work itself. Now as some of you know, the Woolly World Amiibo lineup is crafted with pure yarn, feels just like a teddy bear. And the reason for it being so tricky is because the Amiibo is essentially a knitted figure that requires a bit of, uh, well, knitting knowledge. Or so it seems. My solution? Unless you're going to college for clothing or something, and unless it's like a small scissor cuttable bit of yarn, then ask a boomer for help. BAM! Easy fix! Oh, but, but what if your yarn Amiibo ends up lighting on fire? O okay, either A, get some water for that bitch, or B, if all outs fails, yeet that shit over your neighbor's fence. They'll think of it like a late Christmas gift or something. BAM! Easy fix. Well, what if my amiibo stops breathing? Go see a psychiatrist. BAM! Easy fix. Now, there are many of these little niche fixes to be told about and solved, but for the sake of the laziness, let's get on to the other half of the discordant yin yang of broken amiibo, that being the obstructed NFC chip. If your amiibo is not responding to the NFC chip on connection, then depending on the game, there are many fixes to be made. Now, I'm going to demonstrate an NFC chip fix without physically destroying the figure itself, as it would nullify the hard work and progress made after solving the physical aspect of the ordeal. So some universal examples of fixing a dysfunctional NFC chip are to rub the bottom against a magnet or wet soap cloth or something, or perhaps even check for system updates on the system itself. Maybe there are some silly external factors that exclude the possibility of a broken NFC chip, such as the probability of you knocking it off the base or putting it onto the wrong Joy-Con. Okay, okay, all insults towards intelligence aside, most of the time the Amiibo has already been used for that one day that we're specifically programmed to be used for. You see, if there are to be infinite usages of an Amiibo in the first day, then people everywhere would
would just abuse the amiibo. Oh, come on, Shulk. I just want another five daily coins. So nothing really about the chip itself being broken, more or less just about a function itself in the system. A loophole around this botheration that used to exist is where you go into the switch time zone settings and skip ahead a day or two. The most famous example of this was with Breath of the Wild upon release, but has since been patched and most likely no longer works with the majority of the games nowadays. Understandably so, but now what does this mean if all hope is lost for our broken NFC chip? What if the chip itself happens to be broken? Well, fixing the NFC chip would A, require ripping out the whole chip disk from the bottom from the scanner, B, cost hundreds of more dollars to rebuild the chip disk from scratch, yes, from scratch, and C, it's honestly just easier to buy a new Amiibo at this point. Perhaps an even worse case scenario, the Joy-Con, Wii U, Gamepad, and what have you, is the offender of the Amiibo not working. There are many ways to test this, such as to scan it on another person's device, to completely tear down the whole system or controller itself to see inside, or to just buy a whole new Amiibo entirely. If this is the case, then I'd argue you're toast in terms of being able to scan any Amiibo at all if it's broken. Then again, buying a new Amiibo is absolutely the best way to- Oh hi, I'm your new roommate! Okay, seriously though, sorry for not having much answers for an NSC chip aspect of the video, but hey, try out my methods and see if they work. BAM! Easy fix. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video for me. Let's just hope here that my advice and tutorials were helpful in some way and enriching to you guys and were both worth your time. Potentially more amiibo related content to come in the future, despite the unfixable element that is the bleeding popularity of amiibo and lack of amiibo support lately. Regardless, I hope you guys have a good day. Oh, come on.